Well, let the games begin. Earlier this afternoon, the opening ceremonies for the 2012 Olympic Games took place in London. And a few hours from now, they will air here in the U.S. For the next two and a half weeks, the finest athletes from around the world will compete for gold, silver, and bronze medals in sports like cycling, swimming, gymnastics, and table tennis. And despite long-time testing rules and procedures, this year, more than 100 athletes have already been banned. In the six months before the Games, athletes who would have likely been qualified to compete under suspicion were tested and told they would not be inv invited to London. But we wanted to imagine for a moment the potential all athletes would have if doping were allowed. Would athletic abilities far surpass anything we've seen before? Andy Mia, a bioethicist at the University of the West of Scotland, recently told Nature magazine, if the goal is to protect health, then medically supervised doping is likely to be a better route. Better yet, the world of sports should complement the World Anti-Doping Agency with a world pro-doping agency, the goal of which is to invest in safer forms of enhancement. We tracked down another man, Julian Savalescu, chairman of practical ethics at the University of Oxford, uh, to talk a little bit about this. And I know, Julian, you seem to agree with this sentiment that it's unrealistic to think that doping is not going to happen. So since it does, uh, you know, let's make sure it happens safely. Is this your argument? Yeah, there's abundant evidence that the absolute prohibition of doping is failing some of the world's best athletes like Lance Armstrong, Carl Lewis and Barry Bonds have all been implicated in doping and it's likely to fail because the substances that athletes are using today just mimic the natural substances in their body that their body naturally produces like growth hormone. It's been impossible to detect this. The people who get caught today are the incompetent athletes or those with relatively few resources. What do you mean relatively a few resources? I mean, are you suggesting that the ones who get caught simply don't have, uh, you know, the best drugs, the drugs with more invisible ingredients? I think, you know, there, there is a fair number of people who are trying to do this themselves and get caught. I think there was a Moroccan athlete that was just recently banned. Um, but the substances like growth hormone, and indeed you can even retransfuse your own blood nowadays. Now, that's virtually impossible to detect. If you do this properly, you're really not going to pick up uh, the vast number of people. You are really seeing the tip of the iceberg, given the huge rewards that are on offer and the relatively low probability of being caught, we're probably only seeing you know, a small fraction of the number of people being caught. But I mean, I, I hear this argument a lot for a number of things, that it's already going on, so we might as well make it legal uh, so it can be regulated. I mean, uh, is that actually a good reason to make this, uh, you know, the case in the Olympics? No, I think you're, you're right, just because it's going on. I mean, murder's going on and we shouldn't legalise that. Um, but if we can find good reasons to allow some doping agents, then and it will be easier then to, to carry on sport, I think we should. So a, a test case of this is caffeine. This used to be on the banned list. It increases the time to exhaustion by 10%. Uh, it's now been taken off the banned list because it's safe enough. And it doesn't seem to have ruined the spectacle of sport. It means you don't have to test for caffeine. There will be very dangerous things that we should test for, but things like EPO, blood doping, growth hormone steroids can all be given reasonable medical supervision and reasonable normal physiological endpoints. Uh, but I think that's a difficult thing here. I mean, you seem to be arguing that certain things should still be banned. So doesn't that totally void the argument that uh, it's already happening, so it might as well be regulated? I mean, if athletes just continue to take the stuff that's banned, uh, to be better than the other competitors, wouldn't that sort of defeat the purpose of making some things legal? No, not really, because you know, we're living in a world of, of fixed resources. You, you can only wage a certain number of wars and a, a number of wars on certain people. So why not use the relatively limited resources? Water or the anti-doping agency only has 20 million US dollars. That's not that much to patrol the whole of the world's sporting population. So why not use those resources on enforcing a ban on children and identifying the really unsafe substances that really do jeopardise athletes' health? Blood doping doesn't jeopardise people's health. Let me ask you this, though. Who would get to decide uh, what would be banned and what wouldn't? It seems, at least to me, kind of a subjective matter here. Well, you need criteria, and I've suggested three criteria. One is safety. Another one is that the agent has to be consistent with the, the spirit of a particular sport. So things which reduced your anxiety or tremor in sports like archery or shooting, 
such as beta blockers should be banned or something that removed fear in boxing should be banned. But anabolic steroids simply enhance the benefits of, of training and increase the time from recovery. They don't fundamentally change the activity. And the last thing is you want sport to be fundamentally human uh, endeavour. If you gave people robotic or artificial limbs, that would change the nature of sport. But that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about growth hormone and steroids. Well, I think that's a really good point, and I know that that um, particular point has generated a whole lot of argument. Um, I know that there are other performance enhancing uh, things that are not drugs, uh, the full body swimsuits, or I know that there's a South African sprinter um, who actually has mechanical prosthetics. Um, do you think that, th that this differs from performance enhancing drugs? Well, I think the suits don't change much. They just change the amount of friction. So I don't, I don't see that that's, and indeed they have been allowed to an extent. But, but Roger Pistorius, I think you're referring to the South African athlete with blades. At the moment, he can't, can't run faster than Usain Bolt, but it's only a matter of time before that technology enables a person like that to run faster than, than someone like Usain Bolt. And I think that should be banned because I think that's not really running and it's substantially the contribution of a technology. So, you know, I think we can draw lines rather than simply having a sort of very um, blunt-ended absolute ban on all performance-enhancing drugs. It's impossible to implement. Uh, I know scientists at this year's Olympics, uh, they have vowed to make this year the cleanest ever when it comes to doping. I want to show you some clips of a story. Uh, a CNN reporter went inside one of the labs and we just wanted to play a, a short snippet of that story. During the period of the Games, this $30 million facility will see 150 scientists manning the laboratory 24 hours a day. Samples of blood and urine from the athletes will be delivered direct from the Olympic Park. We reckon we can pick up even things you hadn't thought of. We can do a sort of what is known as data mining approach, where we can look for things that we hadn't, we hadn't thought of. So I think we'll soon be away from the days of designer drugs beating the analysts. So what about this notion, Julian? Uh, of course, there are um, better and better, more undetectable drugs, but science is also getting better in the anti-doping agencies in terms of being able to find um, things out. Shouldn't that be the goal, really um, devoting resources to uh, the anti-doping aspect of this? Very tail, and if it could work, I mean, it would be a great solution. But time has shown that it hasn't worked, and indeed time will tell whether these claims are true or not. I haven't heard any good arguments of how they're going to accurately um, detect blood doping. Now, you know, if, if it's true that we can, for once and for all, eliminate doping, why not? But, of course, it's a war between the dopers and the doping agencies, and it's unlikely that one party is going to win this war outright. It's always a moving target. And as with most wars, uh, we have races to, to build the better weapons. And some people have even said in this case, uh, there's been an arms race, of course, that drug companies are already competing to make the best drugs uh, with the least visible ingredients. I'm wondering, though, if you think, uh, you know, legalizing certain types of doping would make that exponentially worse. And, and, you know, competition would simply be about who uses the best drugs as opposed to who's the best athlete. Well, as I said, if that were the case, we should ban those agents, but it's not at the moment. I mean, nobody thinks that Carl Lewis is somehow not one of the best athletes ever. Um, but, the, but the point is, at the moment, we just have a black market. If you introduce a white market, if you introduce legal safe substances, you can compete with that market. And of course, there's always going to be something that gives you some advantage, but you narrow the gap between the cheaters and the honest athletes that are concerned about the health. You give the honest athletes a weapon, if you like, to, to compete. Um, so you're never going to eliminate these problems entirely. At the moment, you know, we're in very poor damage control mode and we should, we should, we should up that and, and be more effective in reducing the problem. Uh, just let, let's break this down really simply. I mean, is it fair to say that what you're calling for would more or less make it mandatory for all athletes to dope in order to remain competitive? Well, uh, you have to ask the question, is it now more or less mandatory for athletes to dope using, you know, unsupervised doping agents? And, and I suspect that's pretty much the answer. You know, you, you, we, one study a number of years ago asked athletes, if you weren't going to be detected, how many of you, these Olympic level athletes, what, how many of you would use a doping agent, agent that would guarantee that you win? 90% of Olympic level athletes said they would use the substance if they weren't going to be caught. Now, that's probably the reality out there.
You know, this is a really controversial topic, but uh, we thought it was one that was worth bringing up because guess what? We haven't heard a lot of people talking about it, and we appreciate you weighing in. It's definitely a unique perspective, but one that I think, um, you know, deserves at least uh, discussing. Uh, great to have you on the show. Julian Savulescu, uh, Chairman in Practical Ethics at Oxford University. Thanks very much.